Okay, good morning, folks. This is the uh, end of week five. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I decided to swap the material that was supposed to be covered in week six and week seven uh, and uh, do it in the reverse order. Okay. So uh, today we're going to start the topic of. Uh, hybrid analysis and uh, it's a it's, it's nothing complicated it's just that the problems that we're going to be doing you have to look at look at the geometry and recognize that this problem these vertical lines these vertical pieces they should be modeled with beam elements you can see that right here right here beam elements this thing that although they all look three-dimensional to us but you have to recognize and learn for the purpose of this course this thing should be done with shell element and that vertical bulky piece in the middle of course solid elements okay uh so that's what we mean hybrid now there may be some people might argue that well you know this middle piece can i not do it as a beam with a fat geometry yes yes these are things that are important but in this course i want to show you how to do models where all three types of elements are present so do not model this whole thing with solid elements some people may be tempted to do that model it with beam shell and solid okay now the other thing that i should tell you is that this problem in the book is done by a very weird way of creating that geometry. Basically, we need a line, we need a surface, and we need a three-dimensional object. So in the book, because I want to take you on a detour, detour of different things can be, that can be done, you know, I create that object in a very weird way. For example, I make, uh, let me see now, let's scroll down here. Uh, I make this, first of all, this piece, three-dimensional piece, then I'm going to extract the top, top face, let me go down, scroll down, you know, basically extract the top face of it like that. This is ridiculous, which is fine. I mean, that that was a different purpose. So I'm not going to follow the book, the book's way. This is one difference. The second one is that in the book of this, look at, look at the loading of this problem. The bottom is clamped. The bottom of the cylinder is clamped. And this surface, this uh, the shell elements are subjected to a pressure. Of course, the top of the top of this thing is also clamped. Okay, uh, if you think about this thing, and by now you should re realize that uh, y z y z is a plane of symmetry. In other words, you don't have to model the whole thing. All you need to do is to model half of it, and everything is going to work out fine. Now remember. Just making half of it is not good enough. You have to apply the proper symmetry restraints on that half, okay? In the book, the whole thing is modeled, the whole, without any geometry. This, the third thing that's different is that this problem can be done as a single part. You might say, well, how the heck are we going to do this thing as a single part? If this is supposed to be a beam, this is supposed to be a shell, and this is supposed to be a solid. Okay, it is possible to do it as a single element. So that's how I'm going to start doing the problem. I finish it, show you that it works, just like the way it's done in the book. Then I come back and solve this thing and as, a, as an assembly of three parts. The vertical line, this is one part. The surface, this is the second part. And that cylinder in the middle, the third part. So this can be done as a single part or it can be done as an assembly of three parts or several parts in general, okay? Uh, the book does it as a single part. Now, do we care how to do hybrid problems on, uh, on, uh, on the test? The answer is no. It's entirely up to you. In all likelihood, in all likelihood, you're going to be do it, doing it as a single part, okay? So today, two problems. 
One is doing this problem as a single part, and also I use symmetry into account, take symmetry into account. Then I come back and repeat the same problem as an assembly of three parts, also symmetry will be taken into account. So, are there any questions? Okay, there are no questions, so we move on. We start with a single part. Part, okay. All right. So immediately I save, file, save management, save as, desktop, new folder this first one is your lab 51 lab 51 and we are doing the first time single part no part and let's say that this is uh, something that you have to do on the test and you have to submit your work so i'll call it uh, yeah, okay, just for reminder, problem, I don't know, problem two. Now, notice that, or at least I should tell you, that I'm not going to follow all those naming conventions that we discussed. I will do it exactly like it is, and then at the end, I come through that trick. I don't think it's a trick. Through that process, add my student ID number in front of whatever name I had before, my last name in front of whatever I had before, and then uh, move on, okay? That is not a trick. That's the way of doing it. Okay. Now, uh, single part. So which one are we going to make first? Should I make that cylinder first? Okay. Uh, in order to make a cylinder, solid cylinder, you must be in part design, and we are there. So on that horizontal plane, I will sketch. The dimension of that cylinder, the radius of it is 0.5. So 0.5 inches, right there. And uh, uh, let me dimension it. Diameter one, or radius 0.5. E uh, exit. Okay, now, let me show you this figure again. Uh, I can make this whole thing and at the end, cut it. That's one way of doing it. Or I can make uh, half of it, okay? So that's what I'm going to do at least today, okay? So I'm going to uh, uh, pad this. The height of the cylinder is, uh, what was the height? The height of the cylinder is, hmm, looks like it's four inches, okay? Two inch up, two inch down. It sure looks like it. The, the exact thing is in the in, in the book if you want to see it, but uh, anyway. So that's a mirror extent, two inch up, two inch down. Okay. Hmm, maybe that is actually three. So 1.5. Look a little shorter now. Okay, very good. Okay, now, I have a choice. I can cut it right now, and this is in part design. No problem, I can cut it. There we are. And I'm going to keep the other side just for for visualization purposes. There we are. Okay. And we're going to save it. Then I'm going to make a surface. And the surface is this thing with those dimensions. Okay. Now, to make a surface, you cannot be in uh, uh, part design. You have to be in generative shape design okay so on that plane i will sketch okay there are different different ways of doing this thing it's entirely up to you how you want to do that oops uh, let me flip this okay entirely up to you how you want to do that this is the approach that i'm going to take so I make uh, something like that, like this, 
I'm not going to clean it up, don't worry. Notice that I did it so that the centers are aligned, like so, like that. Well, I'll just yeah, leave it like 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 this for now. Yeah, actually, let's do it like yeah. Let's go down here. Okay. Now I'm going to hide this thing for you to see what happened. This is what I drew. Okay. And uh, let me add another circle here. That's where that cylinder is going to go into. Of course, we have to do a cleanup here. So let's do a, a, a quick trim. I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim that. Okay, yeah, that's good. Let's bring this guy in the front. Uh, actually, we can dimension it right now. This radius, well, remember, it's the same as the radius of that uh, cylinder. And that was, uh, let me see now, it was 0.5, right? This radius was 0.5. 0.5. Uh, this one is the radius is one. Okay. Notice something. Well, let me put out the other dimensions also. So this height is two. Okay. And this is one. Oh, you know, yeah, that's that's it. Now, something weird is happening here. If you zoom in, at least I thought that was the case. I don't know whether these are concentric or not. It looks like they are, but just to be on the safe side, let's try it. Uh, actually, because of all these dimensions that I put there, they become they became concentric. But before I put these dimensions, they, they see, seemed that the, the center was off. But they are gu guaranteed. They are concentric now. Okay? Exit. Where's the exit? Right there. And now you have a closed surface. Closed surface. You see this? A closed surface. I can put a, a, sorry, a closed curve. That's what I mean. A closed sketch here. I can put a surface on it by saying fill, F-I-L, select it, and it puts a surface there. Let's bring the hidden part into the show mode. This was hiding, let's bring it in here, and there we are. Okay, all I have to do is this line that goes from here all the way up by four inches, okay? Because that's what this thing is, four inches high. All right, uh, well, uh, right here, you see that? You can create a line from here in any direction that you want. So we create a line. The method of doing it is from point in direction. What is the point? That is my point. What is the direction? Z. And how far up I'm gonna go? Four. This is my model. Okay. So let's save everything. Uh, before we do that, uh, let me uh, uh, make this everything as a, out of steel. Metal, steel, on the part. Okay. A couple of comments that I'm going to make. This was a line, right? I, I used this. So I did not use a sketch. Remember, if you use a sketch to draw this thing, then you have to join it, okay? Not in a case of a not in the case of a, a line, a wireframe. Okay, so save everything. And now we're gonna go to generative structure analysis. Katia immediately recognizes there is a surface, a solid, solid object there, and it's gonna do it for us. Folks, I wanna show you something that's very really important. Sometimes notice that. Notice that. Uh, well, actually, let me show. Yeah. <laughs> notice that the load toolbar is here, and the uh, what is that? This restraint toolbar is there. Something important I'm going to show you. Sometimes, not knowing inadvertently, you delete this. You see that? Static. Or it gets deleted by itself. I, I don't think it's 
ever the software. Usually people do something and they don't realize and they delete the static case. You see that? See, these are on. These are on. In other words, load is on, restraint is on. But if accidentally you delete this, look, this is became this became dim and this became dim. So people call me, what happened? I can't apply a load. I can't I can't put a constraint because you deleted this static case. Don't worry about it. Two ways you can do that. Just kill this thing, get back into it again, or insert static case. This is the one that you deleted. You click on it. Don't worry about it. Everything is new here. You see, it came back. In case it ever, ever happens to you, this is what you should do. Now, let's look at our mesh, by the way. A solid mesh is created, and it's right there. And if I say, show me the mesh, it's going to show you the mesh, but only that solid because we haven't done anything else right there. We haven't done anything else. So we're going to say uh, deactivate. Excellent. So let's mesh this surface with shell elements right there. I'm not taking you to advanced meshing tools as the book does. I'm using these lousy three three noded elements, three or six noded elements, three in case it's linear, six in case it's parabolic. You click on it, you select that, it puts a representative element size of this much. Let me make this thing a little smaller. We are not talking about accuracy here. I'm showing the process. And linear, I think the other one was linear too, so we say okay. Did I do that? I, I, I can't remember. Did I change that? Point two. No, smaller. Very good. Put a thickness on it. 2D part property. 2D property right there. You select this. Point five. Now, what is my thickness here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll make a think it's a point one, okay? This point five is from previous problem that I did, okay? Right there. Point one. Say so, okay. Some software, when you put a thickness here, in addition to writing a number possibly, they also show you the, 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 the thickness scale here so that you can see how thin it is. Okay, just like we get a rectangular cross section or circular cross section on a beam, some software will, uh, you know, uh, visually enhance this so that you can see what is the thickness of this relative to, for example, length. But Katia does it, it just writes the number. Okay, very good. So now we have two types solid, which was done automatically for us, shell, which we did it. Of course, the, the solid automatically 3D property was put on it. We didn't do this, but this one we did. Okay. Now we're going to beam the mesh, sorry, <laughs> mesh, mesh, the, mesh the beam. So with beam elements, you select a line, turns yellow, you remember that? I don't know, 0.5, that means it puts 8 through the length. You say OK. And if you say, uh, and, and let's do also the cross section, by the way. So uh, 1D property. If the cross section is cylindrical, you can close. You, you, all you do is you put the radius there and close it. If this, if this, uh, if this, if the circuit, if the cross section is not cylindrical, for example, if it's a square or a rectangle, well, it won't let you close it. Even if you put the dimensions here, it won't let you close it. Now, I don't know what what did they say here. The cross section. Point uh, one inch. So this one. Well, this one, it seems that it's uh, that what I meant was rectangular, 0.1 by 0.1. Okay, accidentally I wrote here. Let me make it. Okay, there you are. How about that? <laughs> 0.1 inch by 0.1 inch. 0.1 and 0.1 inch. Okay. So on purpose, I want to do uh, re rectangular. Rectangular. If it's a circle, no problem. Just put the radius 0.1 and close it. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. Go back here. Uh, point one by point one. Remember, you have to specify orientation. Circular. You don't worry about it. And uh, for or for uh, uh, for orientation, 
I select, remember, this is the one that I'm doing, so I select this point. Let's see if we can select that point. Uh, it won't let me select the point. Let me hide the sketch here. Now I can select it. You see? Yeah, and then it says, uh, what is the support? The support, of course, is this object. There we are. You see this? You see this? Point or point one in the direction that I want, in the orientation that I want. Very good. And we say OK. So we have three types of elements. We have solid, was done automatically for us. We have the shell. We have the beam. The 3D property was automatically put for us. This is what we did, and this is what we did. Let us save our analysis. So file, save management. There's the analysis. Save as. I use the same name. Eventually, I'll come and put my ID numbers and everything there in the right folder, of course. And then say OK. OK, now, the bottom, the bottom of this is clamp. Bottom is clamp. The top of the beam, this is the beam, that is clamped. So you put a clamp up there, you can see that. Okay. The the surface is subjected to a pressure. I have no idea what value I'm saying here. Uh, I don't even give the values given in the book. Let's put down, I don't know, 10, uh, 5 PSI. Okay, put down 5 PSI. Let's have an idea how much force you're putting there, by the way. Uh, this was almost 3 by 3. 3 by 3, that's nine, nine, 9 times 5 is going to be 45 pounds. So we put a weight there, which is about... I don't know, uh, maybe uh, 20 kilos. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, too, too much. That, that was too much. I mean, we can run it garbage in, garbage out, but uh, I said five, so let's make it five. Five. Okay. Save it. Now, if I run this thing, it's going to bomb out because, remember, I mesh this by with beams and I mesh this with shells. At this juncture, you have a node from the shell and you have a node from the beam. And the way I did it, these are going to be different nodes. In other words, as if these two didn't know that the other one exists. One did not know the other one exists. The same thing here. The solid was done separately. The shell was done separately. Nothing was done to account for that interface. So there's a, there's nodes on that interface on that semicircle from the shell. There are nodes from the uh, from uh, from the solid, and they're different. And therefore, these are not connected to each other by any means. Let's try it. Let's run it and see what happens. It's going to say factorize matrix computation, etc. So let's see what happened. Okay. So uh, deformation. There. We see. They have no idea. So we know how to handle this thing for assemblies. This is not an assembly. This is a part. But the process is the same. You create a connection between two entities, and then you declare what that connection is, whether it's fastened, whether it's contact, etc., etc., etc. So cancel that, deactivate this. OK, so let's start with the connection between the edge of the shell and the surface of the surface of the uh, cylinder. So the usual thing, you click on this. Just to remind me, I say uh, uh, shell uh, surface, just as a reminder. And, so, and cylinder, how about that? Okay, so the first component is going to be, is if it's bothering you, oh, well, actually the first component, we can select the, the, the solid right here, the cylinder. 
For the second component, I have to select that edge from the cylinder. Now, if it's not letting you do, you're having a hard time, hide the cylinder and then select it, but this is okay, you did it right, right there. We say okay, and this, we're going to say as if they were welded together. Somebody took a welding uh, gun and welded the surface to the solid. Okay? Glued. Welded. Perfectly bonded. Perfectly welded. These are all the same thing. So where is the, where is the fasten? Face, face, right? Face, face. Fasten is the second one, or third one from the left. And this is the one that we just created. So we're going to click that connection right there. And notice that they did put a kind of a fastener sign here. This has nothing to do with bolts and fasteners and knots and things like that. That means glue. That bolt stuff we did yesterday in class. Okay, good, good. Now, uh, so does the, the beam should be fastened to this. So let's go another do another correction, another one. For the first one, let's take the end of the beam. When I say the beam means that line, that's what I mean. For the second one, we're going to select the corner of the surface. Okay, if you can select this corner and you're sure you're picking the the corner of this and not the end of the beam, fine. Otherwise, hide this and hide that guy because it's blocking you. Now we can select that tip, okay? Vertex of the line and vertex of that surface. All right, very good. It's right here. I should have called it, how about giving it a meaningful name? Line dash surface. Okay, there it is. Let me show it to you because I just hit it so that uh, we could pick that corner point. I didn't show right there, it's right there. That little white dot. Okay, now I have, I have a question for you. And this is important. I hope uh, somebody will answer me. This thing, what do I, based on what we have done these days so far since last week, what would I call, what kind of connection would I say there? The end of the beam and that vertex that I created. And now the question is, what would you suggest? Common sense tells you what kind of a connection. Are you still in bed? Okay, that's, you're absolutely right. Unfortunately, the people who wrote this did not use facet, and I'll tell you why. Now, I, you're, you're absolutely right. I would have thought the same thing. But if we try to do that, we'll see what happens. If I select facet on this, it says connection cannot, be, cannot, cannot connect between two points. At least they're telling you a message, you're giving a message that you understand. It says if you have two points, you put them together, you cannot use facet. Many of these messages, we don't even understand what it says. Okay, At least this one we know, it's, it's a no-no. So for a point to point, and this is what I did, for a point to point, you cannot use facet. You have to use rigid in distance connection property, not face to face, rigid in distance connection property. But your guess was right. I would have thought it was fastened too. Now, but when I tell you why they use rigid, perhaps you see the rationale. You, you see, a point to a point. What? A point to a point. So there's no deformation there. It's as if the two, these two things were stuck together. It was one point. There was no deformation. There was rigid connection, basically. Okay, maybe that's what they thought. All right, that's fine. Okay, we did it. 
there is your this rigid connection let's save everything and run it run it Uh, my pressure was in the wrong direction, by the way. I put a minus sign here. If the pressure was on the top, this is supposed to go down. So let's run it. There's a deformation. Let me reset this so that you can see it better. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense? Yeah. Are we good? Are we good? You want to give on a plot of stress right there? Change the rendering. You don't get the stresses in the beam. That's why there's nothing there. But these have stresses. Now, if you say that, wait a minute, why is the stress in the in this cylinder so low? If you want to see the stress in the cylinder, you can say, just show me the cylinder. Don't show me the, the shell. Uh, that'll be this thing, right? There. There is a stress there. But it's so low compared to the shell that it doesn't display it if you put it together. Okay. Save it. Are you hap are you do you have any questions? This problem, let's say we had four uh, 40 points. Where are you guys? Wait. Okay, 40 points. Are there any questions? Will you get your 40 points? I'm trying to wake you up. Will you get your 40 points? You seem... Tell me why. Kiana, tell me why. Yes, absolutely. There are no restraints. We just cut the piece. That's not good enough. You lose everything that you had for restraints. Okay, very good. Deactivate this. Okay, so what do we put on the surface of, of the cylinder that we cut? Surface slider. There you are. What do you put on these edges that you created in the shell? Well, the usual way. In other words, user defined. Uncheck all of these. Select this edge. And select that edge. And this lies in the Y's plane of symmetry. It doesn't move in X. Okay? Rotations opposite. Say okay. Now you get your 40 points. You would have lost about 7, 8 points there, depending on something of that order of magnitude. And don't let it fool you. It doesn't mean the, the plots may look the same. You're not going to get difference in plots. Numbers will be different. If I had any trust in them, these numbers would be different, big time different. Okay. And by the way, if you look at the view from the front, and not the, the side. Okay. Right there. You might say, oh, wait a minute, why does it look like this? That's because these are welded together, perfectly welded together. And rotation is a degree of freedom. If this was a cable, if this was a cable as opposed to a beam, if this was a cable as opposed to a beam, you would go to that rigid connection that you created, transmit degrees of freedom, says do not look at rotations for me because if it's a cable a cable does not uh, sustain rotation so let's run it you see that that comes straight down if it's a cable but because because we didn't do that it's going to pretend that it's a beam and of course it's going to bend uh, let me show you deflection deformation that's what i want deactivate that because this doesn't show you the Stress in the beam, so 
activate. There we are. Okay. And you can animate it. This is stretching. Yeah, this is stretching. Yeah. Okay, folks. So uh, you got the picture? All right. So if there are no questions, I want to repeat this problem. This is your second chance, this time with parts assembly. Oh, uh, let's change the name. File, save management, all of these. The last two we don't need. This is a single part. So all I need is the first and the second. These are the ones that you have to submit. But if you want to do want to do everything, you're fine. So let me see that. So if you want to put a prefix here, for example, you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, dash. Uh, uh, last name. How about that? Okay, last name and I say apply pattern and maybe problem two okay because that'll help you to put to know where this thing is going to go this was problem two right and then say apply pattern see that and now if you want to uh, save it somewhere save as uh, new folder uh, correct names correct names i'm going to put it in there so okay propagate directory do not forget propagate directory let's see where is my screen i don't need this uh there we are these are the two that you created initially this is the one that you changed the name and the, the analysis and the part is what you're going to drop in the in the blackboard, which says midterm lab 51, problem three or problem two. Very good. Kill this back here. We can kill this and that. Any questions? We have. We can, we're going to we're going to do this. There's not much talking here. We're going to do this thing with. Uh, uh, assembly of three parts and uh, are there any questions no okay so we start with the product the choice is yours how you want to do that in all likelihood you're going to do it with uh, parts for immediately save it for i say management i'm not going to worry about uh, you know different things that we talked about so go up here uh, new uh, desktop 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 right there new folder okay so we're going to say assembly lab 51 assembly okay 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 insert insert new part in there and i'm going to call this thing cylinder Still, and still, okay, make it, double click, exactly how I did before, on this plane, I will sketch half a circle, this time I'm going to do half a circle, because I know I'm going to cut it anyway, so, uh, yeah, something like this, Okay, and close it. Okay, let's put some dimensions there. I think this was radius 0. 0.5. Radius 0. 0.5. Yeah, exit. Well, we need to make a cylinder out of this. You have to be in part design. So double click, click on that, go to part design and uh path three inches one and a half in each direction there we are this is done click on the floppy it saves this thing insert insert new part in there call this thing the surface properties surf 
it's not the part name, that's the instance name. This is the part name. Surf. Let's break it. And this time I'm going to do it a different way, okay? So on that plane, I'm going to sketch. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to project that circle, half a circle there, instead of drawing a circle and, yeah, good. And hide it there and clean the rest of it, something like that. Uh, do the rest from here to there. We're going to clear it up. And uh, yeah, it was something like this. Okay, we'll clear it up. Don't worry. Don't worry. So uh, first of all, uh, let me see now. Uh, let's go give some dimensions here. Uh, I think this was two, if I'm not mistaken. Was it two? No. Cancel. Sorry. Let's delete this. Well, let's make it two. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Wait a minute. This was. Oh, yeah. And uh, this thing was. Uh, oh. I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. This was not a good idea, but uh, it's fine. We'll get it to work. Okay, no problem. Okay. We make this control uh, that. Believe me, I'm making it too hard. Tangent. Okay, very good. We're going to take this. Control that. Uh, uh, coincident. Look, I'm making it too hard. I know. So you do it the, the smart way. Uh, dimension. Uh, this one is one. That's ridiculous. And then finish it. Okay. Exit. Sure, the other dimensions are okay. Exit. Fill it. F I L L. You can't do it in part design. You're going to go to wireframe and surface design or generative shape design. I keep saying wireframe and surface design because there's something called wireframe and surface design. In okay. This is very important. I want to show you something. It says I can't fill this thing because it's not closed. You know how to fix this. You go to that sketch because there's a gap somewhere. If you look close enough, and my guess is over here, you can see that. You see this? You see that? You see? If it's too small, go and say tools, sketch analysis. There's an open profile, so let's take this thing and close it. That didn't work. Uh, cancel. Close, 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 cancel. Let's undo. You know what? Oh, there's, there's also something up there that's not a pro that's not good. Let me do it like that. This control you could have done it with that sketch analysis, but I don't want to do a lot of things that are not necessary right now. Okay, there was a gap here. I think. I think that closed it. Now, if you if you say uh, tools the sketch analysis, it should it should be closed. Yeah, closed right there. Say fine. Things like this happen. And presumably two years ago when you took your courses with Dr. Pushka, I mean, you did stuff like this. So I don't know. So FIL, if not, you remember it now. Good. Things like this happen. Uh, let's bring this thing in the front. Okay. All right. Let's make that line. Remember that line? But we're going to insert a new part. Save everything. Now you can see why I said most of you probably are going to do it with part design. Insert new part in there, and I'm going to call it the bar. How about that? Properties, bar, bar, and bar. Okay, let's make it. 
All it is is a line. We know how to do lines. Point and direction. This point, if I can select it, direction is Z. Height of four. I think it was four. There we are. Okay, go up there. Save everything. Well, let's let's put material on it. Everything is made out of steel. Metal, steel, on that part. Say okay. Okay. Uh, save it. The rest exactly like before, but I'll do it. We have five minutes. I'll do it. Uh, generative structure analysis. Katia sees a solid object, three-dimensional object. It's going to mesh it right away. Fine. Then we're going to do the rest ourselves. We can do the beam, for example. I can do this. The order is not important, as you can see. Did I pick it? Right there. Yeah, uh, same size. Uh, properties, 1D property on that beam. We already say it's rectangular. The dimensions are the same. The orientation, I'm going to use this point. If you're having a problem picking that point, hide this sketch and now pick the point. Okay, we can close it now. Let's do the shell. This is the shell. Uh, same size, okay, very good. 2D property on that. I think we put down point one, very good. Let's create our connections. Why don't we do symmetry first? Okay, so surface slider, where's the surface slider? Right there. Over there, we don't, we don't want to lose any more points. A user defined restraint, it was this edge and that edge. Uh, these are still correct because that's how I made it. Okay, connections. Well, let's do the pressure also. <laughs> this is the pressure, minus, very good. Now the connections. So let's start with the point to point, connection one, hide this, end of the vertex, vertex of the line. For the second component, bring this thing into the show mode, hide this guy, hide that connection because it's blocking you, that corner point. And remember, point to point, vertex to vertex, vertex to vertex, as you say, must be rigid. You cannot be, you cannot use fasten. It won't take it. Believe me. Ridges right here. There. Okay, it did. Now we're going to do the other one, which is the surface of the uh, surface of this. Second component is the edge of that. Uh, yeah, the edge of this. This fasten. Can I make it rigid? Of course you can make it rigid. You, but you know what it means is that after deformation, that circle does not change at all. It remains exactly the way it was before. You can make it rigid, but that's a big point deduction. Yeah, I mean, point deduction for your 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 connections basically must be fastened. Rigid means that if you say this is rigid against that, neither one of these, neither the cylinder nor that curve will ever change shape. That's what rigid means. For a point to point, it doesn't matter. Of course, point to point, shape of the point doesn't change. I don't care. Okay. Uh, where is that fasten? The second one is fasten. Say okay. And uh, I hope we didn't forget anything. Yeah, good. Let's run it. I'm sure it's going to be okay. I hope. <laughs> Oh, oh, the clamps. <laughs> Nothing is clamped. <laughs> of course, it will fly away. This is clamped. And let's get the beams, that, that one line that we hit. The top of it is also this line. Let's get it. See, this guy is not very forgiving. It doesn't know your mind, so. Better work. Yeah, it did work. There we are. Same thing. Just one last thing. Remember I said, don't do rigid for the cylinder to the surface. Let's try it. 
Let's see what happens if you try to do that as rigid. So there's the fasten one. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to make that thing rigid and see the deformation. Rigid on that last one. It draws something like this, okay? Let's run it. I bet those guys are not going to budge at all. Let's look at the displacements. Okay, so uh, let me see now. Displacement, uh, double click on this. Just show me the cylinder, for example. There's a cylinder. Uh, zero displacement, we can see that. The shell is not a problem, shell will deform. Uh, so let's see now, where is uh, shell? Show me the shell. Uh, this, that will change, but that cylinder and that thing that's around it are going to stay exactly the same shape. shape. You see this? So just because it runs and it gives you a number doesn't mean anything that you do is right. All right, folks, so it's exactly 920. Are there any questions? Okay, so here's the plan. I will uh, create a new session because this session expires in about 10 minutes anyway. I made it to oh, 920, maybe already gone. I'll create a new session saying that your two hours, remaining two hours, and you have to join that session. Bye.